Hi, I'm Lester. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you very much, Rob, for inviting me to do this um, short talk on our recently published paper, Effects of the Nordic Hamstring Exercise on Sprint Capacity in Male Football Players, a Randomized Control Trial. So if any of you want the full text, uh, just feel free to drop me an email or get in touch at uh, Twitter or ResearchGate. So um, the Nordic hamstring exercise intervention has previously been shown to reduce the risk of sustaining a hamstring strain injury. However, studies investigating the effect on, of the exercise on important performance measures such as sprint performance are lacking. So the purpose of our study was to uh, determine the efficacy of, uh, of a 10-week evidence-based injury prevention uh, Nordic hamstring training intervention on sprint performance in male football players. We conducted a single assessor blinded randomized control trial with, uh, with two groups, uh, an intervention group uh, performing the Nordic hamstring intervention for 10 weeks and a control group um, as shown here. Um, so the intervention group uh, performed this uh, Nordic hamstring uh, intervention as shown in table 1 for 10 weeks. Uh, and this uh, intervention here has been shown to reduce the risk of sustaining a hamstring strain injury uh, in football players. Pre and post intervention, uh, we measured sprint performance uh, during a repeated sprint test and we obtained the total sprint time. Uh, calculated as the sum of these 24 sprints and we also uh, extracted the fastest 10 meter sprint and sprint time of the last 10 meter sprint and uh, we also measured peak eccentric hamstring strength using the noteboard device so if we jump to the uh, sum up of the results um, we observed that the uh, training intervention uh, resulted in a very likely uh, improvements in sprint acceleration performance. So the uh, so an improvement in the fastest 10 meter sprint, and the intervention also likely improved repeated sprint performance and the last sprint performed. And these. Uh, likely to very likely uh, between group changes corresponded to uh, small to medium effect sizes indicating that they are clinically relevant. Um, if we look here at the uh, percentage uh, changes of the within group, the, we see that the intervention group improved uh, around 2 to 3 percent in these uh, sprint related uh, measures. If we look at the sprint uh, measures here, the between group difference uh, in a more practical way, we, we can see that the intervention group uh, would likely gain a 30 centimeter lead um, as a consequence of the intervention during a maximal 10 meter sprint and that such a difference is considered uh, clinically relevant in football. If we look at uh, peak eccentric hamstring strength, we see that the uh, intervention group improves around 20% and we see uh, that the control group, um, uh, that no changes uh, occur in, in, in these players. Uh, the clinical uh, relevance of this study is that uh, an injury prevention program targeting the most common uh, injury in football uh, may also improve sprint performance. Um, and that is um, in contrast to uh, previous claims towards this exercise, uh, which has been labeled as uh, being contraindicated for sprint performance. Uh, when we look at the, the, some of the limitations associated with this study, uh, the repeated sprint test, although it was designed to replicate modern football play, uh, we acknowledge that the validity uh, is unknown in relation to match uh, performance. Uh, and another limitation is that we included amateur football players and thus the results need to be uh, confirmed in players at a higher uh, performance level. 
So uh, thank you very much for watching.